Now, I think that this part of the process is important enough. Oh, wonderful. I just knocked myself out of frame. Now, I think that this part of the process is important enough that um, I want to I want to get it on film rather than just uh, taking pictures. Uh, this is where I actually set the pouch. Um, first I get the leather lined up. Normally it goes a lot smoother than that. And then I get the ring. I check to make sure which side the the uh, little um, protrusion is on. A little protrusion right there. That's the upside of the ring. You want to put the glue on the downside of the ring. I'm going to try to do this so that you can actually see how I do this. I try to position it so that I'm going to be able to put it right onto the ring when I'm done. I'm not uh, I'm not left-handed. I don't know whether that's in frame. center it over the hole. And press it down. And that's it. And then I move on. I think I can probably do this. Just move this whole thing over to get it into frame for the next one. And then I get the next one. Position the leather. It doesn't have to be real perfect because, as you can see from the previous one, there's plenty of room. This one I'm going to I'm going to put the glue on with my right hand because I'm a I'm right-handed so it's a little easier to put a nice thin layer. You want a nice thin layer of glue. You don't want the one I just put on was a little too thick. Not not thick enough to be a problem but you want a thin layer. And then of course I have to switch hands because I can't place it with my left hand. I place it with my right hand. And then I remove that one. And remove this one. And then I go back to the one that I was working on previously. I mean, at an earlier time. figures I mean you know, normally this just goes real real smoothly but of course for the video it's just being hard to get along with
of course you can see when you put this you can see when you put this on that you're getting a good squeeze all the way around the ring Tell you what, you get this glue on your fingers, and it just makes uh, it makes working with this very fine. This is very very fine leather. This leather is eight thousandths of an inch thick. And being this fine, I mean, I, in fact, I'll give you an idea of just how fine it is. Uh, put this here, and I'm about a foot away. My my head is about a foot away, and I'm just going to blow gently. Okay. You see, that it's very very thin leather. So it's a little it's a little hard to position and everything because it's just so light. As you notice, I'm real careful about making sure that I get the. You can always tell where the piece, because this is where it was connected, where it was, because these were made in sets t -t 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 in a row, and then they would just run, run them off, and on both side, on on either side, you'll find this little protrusion. There's always a little protrusion, okay? and that tells you that that's the top side. I mean, actually, if you look, if you look. If you have a really, really good eye, you can also see that the that the that the ring is beveled. It's beveled. It's beveled slightly, with the top side up here and the bottom side down here. And you can you can see that if you've got a if you've got a good eye, you can see that. I know that I'm out of frame. What I'm doing, <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm switching it from my left hand to my right hand. When I was out of frame just then, you've got a little bit of time to work here, so you don't need to get frantic if things get a little squirrely like they just did. I've tried to do them where I just keep doing one right after another in the rows and I found that that didn't work so well so I like to do them um, like this in other words where I take each row and then because there are a total of one two three four uh, let's see how many in total are there they're here there four there are eight of these strips so I keep these in order as I'm doing them, and that gives the uh, that gives the ring. You notice that the that the glue on this ring is already dry, or you know, I mean, it's it's already already. You notice that the glue is already clear, which means that it's 90% dry or 100% dry. Let me just I'm going to jump up real quick here and make sure that I'm still in frame with this, and I'm not. <laughs> Uh, it figures, right? Well, I know that I've got a bump on the bottom of that there. Let me make. We'll try it again here. That's the problem with trying to shoot too close up. Oh, where am I at? I'm way out of frame here. What's going on? Wow, how did I get so far out of frame? Heck.
goodness gracious. All right. Uh, well, let me end up editing that. Anyhow, as I was saying, um, I do these strips one at a time, and then I keep them in order. so that it gives the glue a chance to dry before I move on to the next one. Um, and I'll show you what I mean there in a second. you get glue on your fingers like this, it's best to just go ahead and rub it off right away. Get it out of the way. Get it on your fingers like this because it'll be a problem. And then check your squeeze all the way around. Make sure that you got a good squeeze all the way around, which means that you've got it uh, a good seal. And then I move that one off to the side. Go to the next one. I, like I said, I keep these in order. Um, so that when I'm doing the next one, next strip. Because it only takes about five to six minutes for the glue to dry. Well, to dry to clear, which means that it's, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. And even when you get real quick with these things, I thought about using some sort of a uh, some sort of a sponge or something like that to apply the glue, so that I didn't so that I didn't have to dab it on, like you see me doing. But what ended up happening was that the glue got dry or, or thicker and, and, and kind of tacky and then it would develop kind of a film on it and that was not good so I found that this I found that this method of doing it seemed to work the quickest Make sure I'm still in frame. This method seemed to work the quickest and I didn't have to worry about accidentally moving a previously a previously glued uh, a previously glued ring. I mean, you'll have to you'll have to figure out for yourself you know, how much glue is really necessary. I I put on as little as I can. I still make sure that I get a squeeze all the way around. takes about, well, I mean, actually at the time, it feels like it takes about a minute from the time you start. By the way, in case I, in case I just didn't get any other one, I want to make sure I note just that these have these little protrusions right here where they were, where these pieces of plastic were actually connect, were actually connected together when they manufactured these pieces see if I can find the protrusion on this one there it is right there and these I, I imagine that there was an, another piece of plastic and I don't know whether they were like I don't know whether they were like this All right. 
or whether there was some sort of a space in between them but there's these little protrusions on there which make it impossible virtually I mean it's kind of Murphy proof make sure that you keep this is the top and the bottom and you, the glue goes on the bottom as I also mentioned these are <clears throat> slightly beveled if you look at it carefully you can see that these are slightly beveled um, and actually they aren't they weren't beveled originally but when they get compressed into the hole um, they took on a new shape <clears throat> a new shape <clears throat> from being compressed and so now they are beveled slightly um, that's another way you can tell the top from the bottom because the bottom is narrower than the top I mentioned that before but there, there are eight strips and eleven eleven sections in each eleven sections in each strip and as I mentioned in uh, as I was as I'm going to be mentioning in the write-up I found that I could get a hundred squares of leather out of one square foot because I make these 1.2 inches I make these leather beaches 1.2 inches square uh, the rings themselves are uh, are almost exactly one inch in diameter I mean I imagine you could make them closer you could make the squares smaller than I'm making them but I find that for handling and for working with the uh, working with the pieces I find it's easier also, you, you, you'll you find that you get this. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can see that little bit of a, a little bit of a warp. Okay. A little bit of a warp that there is in the leather right there. Okay. Of course, what that's from is that's from pushing down on a, on a, on a, a curved surface. And it's stretching the leather just a tiny little bit to put the, to put the dish put the dish in the leather you can see the dish in there now mm. and so that uh, contorts the leather a little bit you can see that a little bit here and a little bit here and so that's another reason why I like to have at least a, uh, a tenth of an inch on either side of you know all four sides of the piece so that when I do the next one, I'm not dealing with a contorted piece of leather that's right next to it. So that's my logic for making the uh, squares a little bit bigger. Then they may actually need to be. If you get a little bit of glue on the inside here, I just take my finger and wipe it off. It's not a real problem. The working area of this pouch is so small, uh, and the amount of distance that it has to move is so little that. Uh, even if you're a little bit sloppy with the glue even if you're a little bit sloppy with the glue um, 
you're going to have plenty of working area for these pouches. Oh, I really think that that's probably enough for that. I think you've got the idea. After these are thoroughly dry, I'll actually punch out the uh, punch out the. I have a punch that's exactly the diameter one inch arch punch. used for doing the first part of the trimming process. That's it.